hello everyone and welcome back to another video so in this video we are going to discuss some of the pseudo codes which have been asked previously in the aptitude and pseudo code rounds of capgemini and this is an off campus drive so this is exclusively for the 2021 batches who are appearing for this exam and pseudo codes is going to be a necessary part in it so you should know how to solve them properly so let's look at the questions before that i would like to ask you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed and join our telegram group for which all the links are mentioned in the description box below so let's get started with some of the questions so in this question you have to predict the output for uh, the given set of code now uh, let me tell you that sometimes it might be a code it might be not looking like a pseudo code but uh, uh, in either cases you just have to give the final output which has been returned so in this case uh, let's look at the problem first of all so the problem here is on uh, uh, basically c program or c or c++ they are kind of similar so you know the syntax and uh, if you don't know you should at least know the very basics of c language because that's where everything is going to happen so in this question if you look at the main function which is provided there everything is completely fine except the second line after the declaration of the variables a b and c which has some type of complex coding style as it may seem at the first view but that's not the case it's a really simple arithmetic which is being performed here and as i already mentioned you need to know about the concepts of c so let's break down the problem and see what is happening so first of all what we are looking at is the use of a ternary operator in this case so a ternary operator is something which evaluates a condition if the condition is true the first expression is the result or else the second expression is the result if the condition is false so that is what is currently happening here so if we start with uh, the variable a the variable a has a value of 0 assigned to it and inside this function as you can see there are many brackets so the nested brackets need to be solved first so that we can evaluate everything which is happening over here if you look at uh, the statement a plus 1 equal to equal to 1 which means it's evaluating a boolean condition so we know the value of a is 0 so 0 plus 1 will evaluate to 1 which is true obviously so what will be our next step is that we will getting the value of address of b now since the condition has evaluated to true we have got the value address of b if it would have been a false value then in that case it would have been address of a now if you look at the expression the expression now evaluates to star in the bracket you have address of b which is equal to a question mark b colon c now what do we mean by this is that if you look at uh, the second line here you will find out that we are now evaluating this expression as value at address of b so if you know the concepts of c it will be really easy so the expression will now change to star in bracket you have address of b which is equal to a question mark b colon c now it is saying that the value at address of b will be something so it will be assigned to it because there is an equal to symbol right there and besides the equal to symbol you have uh, the variable a and a question mark which is again the use of a ternary operator now one thing which i need to clarify here again is that when you are using a ternary operator you always evaluate a condition post evaluating the condition you come to an answer so if there is no such condition like uh, it's greater than or equal to zero or uh, something like if a is not equal to b or if a equals to b if that is not the case if such type of expression is not prevalent then you need to check if the value which gets evaluated is greater or equal to or less than zero if that is the case you will accordingly evaluate the answer so what does it mean in this case if you look at the expression a question mark b colon c here we don't have any kind of boolean expression being checked upon for the value of uh, a you just have the value of a right there since the value of a is 0 and 0 evaluates to false we don't choose the value of b we choose the value of c so the value at address of b will be the value of c so now the value of b will change to 2 so when you evaluate this expression this will be your answer 
in this case when you print the answer your answer will be the option number c because the value of a will be 0 the value of b will be 2 and the value of c will be 2 so your answer will be option number c here is the explanation on what i told right now if you can evaluate it stepwise you will see that first of all we evaluate the value of a uh, that is a plus 1 which is equal to 1 and it evaluates to true now since it is true we choose the and b option which is written just after the question mark and then the expression gets reduced to value at address of b equals to a question mark b colon c now since a will be false because the value of a is 0 so 0 evaluates to false thus we choose c and not b so the value at address of b will be now c so when you print them the answer will be 0 2 2 so that is your final answer so now let's look at uh, another problem this is uh, again we have to predict the output in this case we have three integers a b and c and uh, there's a particular pseudo code written right here so you can see that this is a particular format for a pseudo code and sometimes it might be the case that it is written in this format or else directly a part of program is given to you so it doesn't matter you just need to find out the output so in this case we have three variables a b and c and uh, the values are assigned to it and then we are getting some operations which are being performed so b equals to c plus c and c and then we have an if condition inside of which there is again an xor operation between c and a which is being compared to an addition of b and c so let's look at it one by one and try to get the answer so in this case your answer will be 23 but how is it 23 let's understand now first of all brackets need to be solved so c plus c will evaluate to 12 plus 12 which is nothing but 24 and when you perform an and operation of 24 with 12 you will get the value as 8 so the next step will be to evaluate the value of c x or a now you know that uh, c x or a will be done as follows um, c will be holding the value of 12 and a has a value of 2 so uh, if you know about xor operations that uh, when you do xor of two variables having the same value it will result in 0 and if they have different value they will result in 1 again we are since dealing in binary so that is uh, self explanatory so now when you do the xor operation of 12 and 2 you get 14 and when you do the addition of 8 and 12 which is nothing but b plus c you get 20 and since 14 is less than 20 which evaluates to true you set the value of b as 9 but you can see here that the value of b was already 9 so uh, sometimes it might be the case that just to involve you in the question and waste the time there can be certain conditions so you see that the value of b never changed actually and they are simply asking you to print the value of a b and c so in this case your answer will be 9 plus 2 plus 9 plus 12 which evaluates to 23 so that was the option number b in this case let's look at another problem here so here you need to predict the output for the given set of um, pseudo code here now in these kind of problems they might look very easy but you need to find out what things are going in your input because every time you assign a value the previous value for any variable changes so you need to also take care of that so in this case you have a function first of all look at the code properly and then understand what they are trying to do so you have a function uh, foo which can, uh, accepts two integers p and q and in the main function if you would say they are printing the value of foo and inside the bracket they are passing the value of 5 and 7 so these are your set of inputs now you need to evaluate the following expression and find out the answer so take a minute try to solve it it's a very easy question you just need to know the basics of arithmetics and storage and assigning of variable take a minute and try to solve it so now let's look at the answer so your answer in this case will be 58 and how you evaluate it uh, it is very easy again so you can see that the value of p and q were passed as 5 and 7 so now p will store the value of 7 plus 5 since we are performing p plus q so now p will hold the value 12 next time when you evaluate the value of q which is equal to q minus p in the fourth statement it will be 7 minus 12 and not 7 minus 5 because the updated value of p is 12 so q will hold the value as minus 5 in the next line you have p equals to p plus p which is going to evaluate to 24 since p holds the value of 12 in the next line you have q 
क्यू प्लस इक्वल्स टू क्यू इट्स नथिंग बट अ सिंटेक्टिक शुगर विच जस्ट मीन्स क्यू इक्वल्स टू क्यू प्लस क्यू सो यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट समटाइम्स थिंग्स आर रिटर्न इन अ मैनर जस्ट टू कन्फ्यूज यू एंड इट डज नॉट हैव एनी अदर पर्पज सो द नेक्स्ट लाइन विल बी क्यू प्लस इक्वल्स टू क्यू एंड सिंस द वैल्यू ऑफ क्यू इज माइनस फाइव ऑलरेडी सो योर अपडेटेड वैल्यू ऑफ क्यू विल बी माइनस टेन सो यू आर डूइंग माइनस फाइव प्लस माइनस फाइव विच इज इवेलुएटिंग टू माइनस टेन देन यू हैव पी इक्वल्स टू पी माइनस क्यू नाउ वेन यू आर डूइंग दिस द वैल्यू ऑफ पी इज ट्वेंटी फोर एंड द वैल्यू ऑफ क्यू इज माइनस टेन सो वेन यू आर परफॉर्मिंग एन अरेथमेटिक सब्ट्रैक्शन विद अ नेगेटिव वैल्यू इट गेट्स एडेड अप सो योर वैल्यू ऑफ पी विल बी थर्टी फोर एंड द नेक्स्ट लाइन इज क्यू इक्वल्स टू क्यू प्लस पी सो इन दैट केस Your value of Q is now minus 10, and you add it to 34, which evaluates to 24. But this is not your final answer. The final answer lies in uh, returning the value. So return P plus Q gives 24 plus 34, which will be evaluating to 58. So your answer is 58 in this case. So in this question, you need to predict the output for the given set of pseudo code. So first of all, you need to check if uh, the statements are. What am I saying? So now let's look at another question. In this question, you have to predict the output for the given pseudo code. Here you can see that the uh, integers are labeled as P, P, Q, Q, and R, R. So to avoid confusion, I will start labeling them as P, Q, and R. So you see that first of all, we are setting the value of P, Q, and R. Okay. Before solving the question, I would like you to take a pause, stop the video, and try it on your own, and then come back to the video for the answer. So uh, hope you. Found the answer and you are trying to look at the explanation. If not, so in this case, what you are trying to do is first of all solve the if condition, the boolean condition which is being evaluated inside. First, we need to perform the XOR operation. Uh, as uh, XOR operation is something I talked about in this video previously. So you need to perform the XOR operation between P, Q, and 10 initially, and between Q, R, and 5, so that you come to a condition which is either true or false. So let's look at it. so your answer will be the option number d but how did the option number d arrive let's look at it so you are doing the xor operation between 0 11 and 10 which evaluates to 1 and also you are doing the xor operation between q r and 5 which evaluates to 11 since 11 is obviously greater than uh, the expression besides it or you can say that the first expression is evaluating to a smaller value compared to the second expression which is true so you enter into the loop and you perform the and operation between the value of r and q which is uh, the and operation in which you evaluate the answers accordingly now one thing which students get uh, in the answer and mess up with is that since they were performing xor operations previously they simultaneously do the xor operations as well this is where you have to be aware of yourself what you are doing at the time of solving the answers properly so you need to perform the and operation once you get into the if condition after which you need to print the sum of p q and r so in this case your answer will be the sum of 0 1 and 5 which evaluates to 6 so i hope you enjoyed this video and if you did enjoy this video make sure to subscribe to our channel make sure to check out the other videos on the channel for your preparation also share this videos to the ones who might need it and as a request you can join our telegram channel and our campus coding group for which all the links are provided in the description box below for all the videos which we make and discuss over here you can go check out our group and discuss if you require something you can always talk about it on our groups so for those all the links are mentioned in the description box below you can go check it out once again make sure to subscribe to the channel and as always keep learning and keep programming